So what do you do if you're living in an area that has periods of time where it's pretty cloudy? Uh, this would be, in most locations, the winter time, and especially in locations up further to the north, because the north has a couple of strikes going against it in the winter time, and that would be that the days are shorter the further north you go in the winter time, and also um, it seems like, as a general rule, uh, up in the north, the winters tend to be, in many locations, uh, cloudier and um, you know more uh, precip and, and things like that uh, in the in the winter time. As a general rule, I know there's variations, but the, especially the length of the days is is a real issue to the north. So what do you do in that kind of situation? Is solar even a possibility if you are in a cloudy climate or if you are further to the north? Well, I say yes. I think that solar is feasible almost anywhere unless you were to take it to extremes like you know an arctic circle or, or something like that where you're going to have very little to any daylight in the in the winter time um, but remember even in locations like that solar could be an excellent option during the summertime but let's just think about how we're going to handle the winter time and let's just take for example the continental united states the lower 48 so in that kind of a, a situation, I would say that there are three main options for dealing with uh, winter or cloudy weather uh, when you are uh, using a solar system as your primary power source. Now, uh, these are going to vary some if you are to do a combination, like a hybrid system where you're combining solar and you know hydro or wind or, or what have you. But let's just say where solar is your primary option. So option one, would be to buy as large a system as it takes to get you through the winter. And yes, you're right. That's going to cost some bucks. Uh, depending upon your winter, uh, you know, depending upon your weather, the, how far north you are, all kinds of factors like this, your power consumption, all that. But uh, as a general rule, this is going to be the most expensive of these three options because it's going to entail that you size your system for the worst possible conditions, and that's going to be winter time. So you're sizing your system to where your solar system should, as a general rule, be able to provide you enough power even during those dark winter months. And while uh, this is going to be the goal, the ultimate goal, of most folks that are setting up a solar system because we want to become energy independent. So this is the goal, but it may not be feasible for everyone right up front at the very beginning to set up a solar system that's large enough to do that. Because especially if you're not very energy conservative and if you're living in a pretty cloudy northern climate, that's going to take a fair bit of, of money to set up. So. Just be aware, that's the ultimate goal, and if you have the money, go straight to that and be done with it, and case closed. Option two is where we size for spring, summer, fall. So we size our solar system to take us through the majority of the year, hopefully uh, eight or nine months out of the year. We size it to where it will handle that on its own without any help. And then uh, during the winter time, we can reduce our power usage, or at least that's the theory, is that we, during those during three or four months where we're not producing enough power to meet our needs, we reduce our power usage to the level at which we are able to produce with those solar panels. And that may sound like a good option in theory, but in reality, um, it's easier said than done. For instance, there's certain things that are going to use more power in the wintertime than in the summer. For instance, lighting. When your days are shortened dramatically, where, where you're, you have uh, a number of hours in the morning and or evening where you're needing lighting in the house, then that's going to be an extra draw on your power system, uh, depending upon what your heat source is. If it's a wood stove, then it's not going to make any difference. But if you have a heating system that has any kind of power requirements, then that's going to be drawing more power and things like this. And so uh, there is the potential for there to be even increased demand in the wintertime. And um, so this is why I say it's often easier said than done. Now, you, it, it is possible to do, and I'm sure that there are people that do it, but I'm just saying uh, don't bank on this until you've tried it. Don't 
don't just bank on the theory of this sounding good. Let's live in the world of reality and realize that probably this is not going to be the most feasible solution. Um, I will say though, if you are interested in trying this option, uh, one thing that could save you a significant amount of power in the wintertime is something that we discussed back in the appliances module, and that is to move your refrigerator and or freezer into a cool room during the wintertime. Rather than keeping it inside your heated space or your, you know, your main home space where your temperature is in the 70s 24-7 um, in the wintertime, why not move that into a room where the temperature is much lower, maybe the 40s or 50s or something like that, and you could save yourself quite a bit of power. Um, we've done that and found that our well-insulated refrigerator cycles far less and uses far less power in that kind of situation. So then that brings us to option three. And option three is going to be to size your system as large as possible, you know, as, as large as you are able to for your budget. So I'm just going to say size to budget and hopefully this is going to be a large enough system. We're going to try and do everything we can to make this a large enough system to where uh, we're able to make it through, you know, hopefully eight or nine months out of the year with the solar system. Then for those winter months where we're not producing enough power with our solar system, we're going to do a, number, a couple of different things. One is, yes, we're going to try and reduce our power. There's nothing wrong with that, and I highly recommend it if you're on a budget and you are not producing, you're not getting enough power out of your solar, definitely do whatever you can to reduce your power usage. But then if that still isn't good enough, then what you're going to do is you're going to supplement your solar with something else. Typically, that's in the form of a fuel powered generator. And so that's going to mean um, when the sun does come out a little more than normal in the wintertime, then you're not going to be ne needing to run your generator that week, perhaps but then you get some really dark cloudy weather, some snowy weather, whatever, and um, that week you may need to run your generator. And so uh, if your system is sized properly, it should work out where maybe you run your generator once a week, something like that, or, and, and that would be the worst case scenario. I wouldn't, if you're having to run your generator more often than once a week, then your system is not sized properly but uh, that would be the maximum, and it would not be uncommon for you to go two or three weeks um, without running your generator, especially during uh, times when you're, uh, you know, when you're getting uh, more sun than you typically would in the, in the winter. So that would be a excellent starting option um, to combine these two things of reducing your power as much as possible and then supplementing. And by the way, if you have another power source that is independent that you could supplement your solar with in the wintertime, like for instance hydro, that's an excellent dynamic duo there, solar-hydro, because a lot of creeks, they dry up or get very small in the summertime during the dry season, and uh, during the wintertime, the creeks are doing well, but the solar isn't doing so well, and so the, those two can work very well together if you're blessed with a suitable creek on your property, even if it's a creek that only flows in the winter. That could take care of your wintertime dilemma right there. Um, you know, so you've got options like that. Wind, wind and solar. If you're in an area that does have considerable wind, um, but it's not just consistent enough or it's not enough to make wind your primary power source, uh, which for, that's going to be most locations. Wind is not going to be suitable as your primary power source for most locations. Uh, but if you do have a good bit of wind, then you could certainly use it to supplement your solar, and that can could be a help as well. And realize that this third option is a great stepping stone to start out with a limited budget with the size of solar array that you can. But remember, our ultimate goal is to get here, and so we can add on a little bit at a time, a little bit as we're able to, to the solar array to get to the point to where we are able to go, um, as a general rule, year-round without having to run the generator much at all. And so that would, those would be the three main options for dealing with the winter. And yes, it is very feasible. Um, we do it, and we are living in a climate that gets very cloudy and with very short days in the wintertime.